Hey YouTubes, Steven here with Handy Freight, the original gypsy trucker. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we're in, uh, or I am in Kentucky, just stopped at a Love's, had a quick bite to eat, and now I'm ready to start rolling. So I am going to turn the camera around, because you don't need to see me. And let's <clears throat> release the brakes, hit the gas, and let's roll. So the channel is pretty new. I've only uploaded maybe three videos. And uh, the only subscriber is my mom, <laughs> but we're hope, hoping to grow. <clears throat> Time will tell. I watch a lot of YouTubes. I just started watching them recently. And the ones I enjoy are the ones that uh, I can listen to when I'm driving. So I'll pick some trucker that's uh, going down the road and I'll just turn it on and listen to it while I'm going down the road. I don't need to see the driver hooking up his trailer or washing his windshield or doing his log. I got that stuff down pat. But I do enjoy listening to another driver talk, so it makes the time go by. Most of my videos, or what I find interesting about trucking after 35 years, is working on the truck, working in the shop. I have my own shop, one truck, two trailers, and uh, I have a drop trailer at my customer in Minnesota, because I just do the same route every week. I, uh, I haul meat. I'm a Minnesota meat hauler. I haul meat out of Minnesota down to Florida. And then I have another meat customer in Tennessee. And I run that, reload back up to Chicago, and then I generally grab a load off the board to go from Chicago to Minnesota. And even that is uh, pretty much the same load every week. I deal with a... I get a load off another trucking company. So I've been doing that for 10 years. And they know me pretty good. <clears throat> and they pay after, uh, I don't know, I think it's 10 days I get paid. They have me on quick pay or fast pay or something. I don't know. But anyway, we are, oh, I-75, we're coming up to, uh, we'll be, we're an hour south of Cincinnati. So I'll talk for a little while. I guess I could start by talking about my truck. I've only had this truck for three months. And it's a real sweetheart. It's a 2015 T680 Kenworth the high roof it's the prettiest green color it's, I've only ever seen one other one this color and that's pretty much why I bought it because of the color that's what that's what set it apart but it does a, a really good job for the the run that I'm on I pull 53 foot reefers And I come out of a W900 with a C15 Cat, 13 speed. I bought that truck in 2014 and uh, I just sold it. Well, the same day I bought this one, I sold that one. So it worked out pretty well. But the W9 was a, you know, it was a beast. But it was an older truck. It was a 2000, had the 99 engine. 
it ran strong, but the maintenance was getting to be a handful. And when you have a steady run like Florida every week where I get home early Thursday morning and I leave about nine o'clock Friday night. So I don't have a lot of time to do the maintenance and to keep the truck from breaking down on the road. So I just felt it was time to upgrade a little bit. Then this truck was, I don't know, it was an it was specced as an owner operator truck. I bought it from some guy down in Iowa. And there's 600 and, well, there's 600,000 when I bought it. I've got 650 on it now. Haven't had any issues. But it's a real sweetheart of a truck. It, uh, the, the difference in fuel is about $300 a week from the W9 to this truck. So, and that was when fuel was at $2 a gallon when I first got it. Now it's creeping up. It's like 270 and 260. It's getting crazy again. So the fuel savings are, uh, are pretty incredible actually. And I am averaging 7.3. And with the W9, I used to get, uh, well, I, it was a solid six. Now, if I run empty with this truck any, any length of time, it'll pop right up to nine, get a tailwind. One day I was up over uh, 10 miles a gallon running empty. <clears throat> Sometimes I have to run empty out of Florida up to Tennessee, but the, uh, Comparing the rates, I'm, I'm farther ahead going empty to Tennessee than I am to try and pick a load out of, out of uh, Florida. The rates just aren't there. So anyway, uh, one of the things I want to talk about today are the super single tires. I switched to super singles two and a half years ago. And... I really haven't looked back. But before I get into the super singles, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. And uh, I started driving in uh, 1984. And I had just moved to Sarnia, Ontario. And I had a CDL or a chauffeur's permit, is what it was called back then. I didn't go to truck driving school. I didn't do any of that. I was 24 years old and I made one trip in this cab over international with the, with the, the owner's son-in-law and he was only 19. So we made one trip from Sarnia to Toronto and back. And the next day I was on my own and uh, back then, there was just unskilled labor, and if you had the license, there would be a truck for you to drive. But it was rough. There were no logbooks in Canada at that time. I think logbooks came around 90, 91, maybe 92. So my job, I would have to leave Sarnia at 2 a.m., and I would usually have three, four drops in the Toronto metropolitan area. So I'd get to Toronto, my first drop would be around seven. It was usually four and a half, five hours. We had 55 mile an hour trucks. <clears throat> so I get to my first drop, get that off, second drop. It was usually about three in the afternoon before I got all the drops off. And then uh, by the time you got back to Sarnia, you came back empty. But by the time you got back, it would be 9 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. And you'd have to leave again at 2. And this went on, you know, we did this five nights a week. And a lot of times, you know, you'd just get so tired, you'd have to pull over and sleep on the doghouse, take an hour nap. Usually an hour, you just wake up and then you're good to go again. Yeah, I was only 24 then, too. But that's how it is. That's how it was. 
you were a truck driver, you just, you didn't need sleep. That's just a nasty habit. But, uh, and, and the boss, he, you know, if you can't do it, we'll find somebody else. And eventually that first job, that's it. That's what ended up happening. He tried to give me a week off and I was, I was so damn tired. I was saying, are you giving me a week off? He said, yes. And it was just for writing something nasty on the, I wrote shit job on the, on the blackboard on this load that he gave me. Cause, uh, my load wouldn't be ready till later that day. And he wanted me to come in and clean out his hog barn. So anyway, it, uh, <clears throat> it so happened things changed by the morning. He called me first thing in the morning and said, no, I had a load is ready to go. He said, did you write that on the board? And I said, yeah. He said, well, you can stay home. I'm giving you a week off for that. And I rolled over and went back to bed. And I said, man, this is all right. I'll get some sleep. Next day, I went and got another job. Driving for a different guy. So that's just, that's just trucking. A lot of things have changed since then. Uh, you know, I ended up moving. I think I spent about a year in Sardinia, and then I moved to Alberta and got into those super Bs and 140,000 pound loads running from Edmonton, Alberta to Vancouver, then run empty from Vancouver up to Prince George, load lumber, take it back to the rail yard in Edmonton. You could get three trips one week and two the next, but you had the weekends off. It wasn't too bad, but it was a slow slug. There's just nothing but mountains. And with all that weight, you're just, you know, you're, you're, tra you're in third gear on most of those mountains. Back then we ran four and a quarter cats, the B blocks. They were, they were a good engine best you could get back then other than uh, the 500 Mac or the Cat V8. And there wasn't very many of those around anymore. So I've done a lot of different jobs and I've got a lot of different stories. And that's what I'll be doing tonight. Maybe just talking a little bit. about what's going on watching the road it's pretty quiet out here tonight uh, one thing i'll say this end this this truck has got the pack car so coming off a of c15 600 horse to a 450 horse pack car boy it's quite a difference But running Florida, there's really only one or two hills, so it's not a big deal. This truck runs 65 most of the time, 70 if I want it, if I want to go a little faster. At this point in the game, I'm going to take the fuel economy over the performance. Now that Kenworth had the uh, six inch or eight inch uh, chrome stacks. I do have one video. I think the first video I uploaded showed the Kenward, profiled it a little bit. So that truck was pretty noisy and it always had a, you get it over 60, 60 miles an hour, it had a shimmy, but I could never get rid of it, always had it. I replaced everything and it, it just never went away. Sometimes it would go away for a while, but and I'd say, ah, I finally, I cured it. And then a week later, it'd be back. So it was just very annoying. But this truck is whisper quiet. I mean quiet. I can hear the compressor when it kicks in. You don't hear the turbo. You don't hear, you just, <clears throat> it's, it's just incredibly quiet. The Packer engine has a carbon fiber oil pan. 
and apparently that does a lot to uh, deaden the noise. Same as the valve fan cover, carbon fiber. I don't know what else they've done to mute the engine noise down. Probably the after treatment system and the exhaust. It just has a little grass burner as a, for an exhaust pipe. And I'm good with that. My, the deal, you know, when I get into a, a truck that had the after treatment, you have to fill a death tank. Most of the horror stories are about maintenance and, you know, check engine lights. I had one check engine light come on. It was the DEF doser, the thing that sprays the DEF fluid into the DOC, the catalytic converter. It said it was uh, malfunctioned or deleted. So I pulled it off and there was a hole the size of a quarter that the nozzle fits in to spray the DEF into the DOC. And it was completely solidified, crystallized. The, uh, the DEF fluid had just crystallized and, uh, and it blocked it off from uh, putting any more DEF in there. So basically I just took a, a screwdriver and poked it Poked it out, cleaned it up, put it back on, and uh, I've been good to go. Now, I have my own shop, and I I really enjoy doing all my own work. Engine rebuilds, transmission repairs, clutches, rear ends, electrical. I have three teenage boys. Two of them are still at the house. One is in college at uh, UTI down in Lyle, Illinois, started last September. He's got that's a two-year deal. I guess the second year he runs out to uh, Phoenix. So that's interesting. But I have my own shop, and for me the repairs are very therapeutic. You know, you're out on the road and busting your hump every day, all day, and it's just nice to go in the shop and. Uh, fix whatever's wrong with the truck. And I've been doing this long enough that uh, uh, I can usually uh, manage without having to go for go to the shop. When I first get into trucking and I first bought my own truck, I spent enough money at shops. It's just the bane of every trucker. And they know it and they don't care. Because you want your truck fixed or not, quit your bitching. <laughs> That's the way it is. <clears throat> but this run I'm on now, Florida, back up to Tennessee, Chicago, Minnesota, Florida, Tennessee. I really enjoy it. I get to see a lot of the same people every week, stop at the same places. Loads are, uh, you know, the loads are, uh, I have a contract with a, with a big company and get paid every two weeks. Loads are always there. They preload my empty, my spot trailer, so I can just go and pick it up whenever I'm ready. That is very convenient, time saving. On the offside, I have to uh, maintain two trailers. But one of my trailers I've had for 11 years, and uh, I'm in the process now of putting it up for sale, and I'm going to upgrade it. It's just, it's a great Dane. 2001, I bought it in 2011, thinking it was probably all worn out, and I got almost 10 years out of it. I've done some maintenance to it. It's a better trailer now than it was when I bought it, that's for sure. But the 20-year-old trailer has a certain, uh, it's like a 20-year-old truck. There's a certain amount of money it's worth, and that's about all you're going to get. So uh, I'll keep you posted on that. I'm going to try to, to uh, you know, make a few more videos. 
because I'm on the road so much, I can't do all of shop, but all the repairs, videos that I'd like to. So I'm going to make a few videos of on the road. I've got a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, but my knowledge doesn't do a, a new guy a whole heck of a lot. If I have a problem and I need to solve it, if it has something to do with trucking, then I just go to YouTube and I, I Google or whatever I look for somebody else that had that same problem and find out what their solution was. So some of the things I'll talk about are technical. Some of the things are just going to be stories. I've probably forgotten more than uh, I realize it'll it'll might it might uh, spark some some neurons in my head and I'll think of some uh, think of some things that I had forgotten about we can talk about but this truck is a real sweetheart now <clears throat> I'm taking it into Kenworth when I deliver uh, well, I'm going to head, as soon as I get delivered, I'm going to head up to uh, St. Paul Kenworth. Because this truck, it's got 650,000 miles on it. I don't know where I'm at in uh, where the after treatment system, when the last time it was cleaned or maintained or maintenance was done. I have no idea. But watching a couple of different YouTubes, uh, I guess because of what the EGR valve, it feeds dirty, dirty air, sooty air back into the engine, which creates a lot of carbon layers, carbon packing. The EGR, the EGR cooler, the exhaust side of the turbo, and to some extent the 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 soot filter on the uh, the DEF filter they just get packed with soot and you know that that causes a lot of problems so I don't know where I'm at with this one but Kenworth has a, a machine that they can hook up to the EGR cooler they don't have to drain the water or anything they hook up this machine and basically they they uh, fill a full of cleaner where you know what the the passages that normally handle air through the EGR cooler and like I say the EGR and the exhaust side of the turbo this this material this some kind of fluid goes in there and it just takes it from uh, carbon packing to shiny metal again all within an hour they just run this this solution through it and the only way that i could do something like that is to uh you know take everything apart which would be you know pretty much a two-day job so for three four hundred dollars i can go in there and uh, they're going to clean my egr just get rid of all this carbon that's in there and just basically blow it out through the exhaust i think they do a a forced regen and uh, it burns it all out so I'm gonna try that I have an account at Kenworth in st. Paul and that's where I buy a lot of my parts and uh, I haven't had a truck in there in probably six years so I don't know any of the mechanics I just know the parts guys anyway that's what I'm gonna be doing on Thursday and uh, I'll be tired, so I'm just going to go to bed. And, or, it's a brand new shop facility there, so I'm thinking they probably have those nice Lazy Boy chairs. Maybe I'll just go curl up in one of those, me and my mask, sleep for a couple of hours. They don't take set appointments, so he told me if I'm there first thing in the morning, they, they'd get me in as soon as they could. So and that shop is just massive. So I'm hoping... Uh, they're not backed up. 
If they are, we will do it another time. So that's what I'm doing on Thursday. Tomorrow I deliver this, uh, this load goes to uh, Chicago, uh, 6 a.m. And then I, I reload at uh, 5 p.m. And I've got just enough hours to uh, head to my reload and park there, take a 10 hour break. and uh, load that and roll on. It's uh, it's another load that they'll take it as soon as I get there in, in Minnesota. It's usually around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. <clears throat> I'm probably not going to talk too much about my customers. I don't think they would appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'll just... I'll just tell you the states that I pick up in and deliver in. Loose lips sink ships. Is that how that goes? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I wanted to, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about were super single tires. Super single. I, for a long time, I remember guys having super singles back in the 90s. They were pretty much a rarity, but, you know, they used to talk about uh, how light their truck was. Shave a thousand pounds off your, your truck and trailer. And I don't know, I just kind of like the looks of them. And now more recently, in the last five years, you hear a lot of people like talking about the fuel efficiency. And I put them on my Kenworth and I grabbed a W900. I grabbed a solid mile per gallon. Summertime, I could do pretty well. I could get like six and a half pretty easy with that Kenworth. Winter fuel is down to five, eight, five, nine. But before I had super singles in the wintertime, I was down to four, eight, four, nine. On a good day, you get five and a half. <clears throat> so I gained a, a solid mile per gallon by converting to super singles. And when I bought this new truck, I didn't run a mile. I put super singles on it right away. As soon as I got to my shop, the first thing I did is pull these tires off, pull the duals off, and uh, I put them back on my W9 and put the super singles on this truck. So I have nothing to compare it to, but this truck is really, uh, you know, it is, it's, it's pretty fuel efficient. Now I'm not getting uh, you know the Volvo guys. Oh yeah, I get eight miles a gallon all day long. I I don't I find I have a hard time believing that. They might get it downhill, or maybe they just, you know, they got a tailwind, so they know they're going to get good fuel economy, so they decide to measure it that day. Oh, yeah, every time I measure it, I get eight miles to the gallon. I measure mine tank to tank. This little gauge now that uh, I have on the dash, it's currently at 7.2. And uh, it'll probably go up because I had just stopped. It was at seven seven five before that, before I stopped at the loves. But yesterday when I was coming out of Florida, it was at uh, nine point five. But it's not. Sometimes it's accurate, and sometimes it's it's not. It's just off. So I can't rely on that. So what I do is, I hit the odometer, I measure every time I fuel up. I I reset the odometer to zero. And, you know, whatever it comes out, usually like yesterday I had, uh, well, yesterday I did really good because I had some empty miles on there. But I had uh, 1,350 miles and I put in 171 gallons. That came out to 7.75. 
that's damn good. We're in December now, so we're on winter fuel. But I was pretty impressed. So, like I say, I'm saving at least $300. Now the fuel's gone up. It's going to be more than that. I haven't even... Uh, it takes too many brain cells to think about that stuff all the time. But back to the super singles. Uh, I've always wanted the super singles. I like the idea, but... Hey, we we live in the real world, and uh, if I get up tomorrow and said, "Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go down and buy all new super single rims and tires for my truck and both my trailers," and you know, that's probably uh, ten grand. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Maybe I'll put it on a visa. <laughs> anyway, this was never gonna happen. I I couldn't see it happening, and so. Two and a half years ago, I pulled into a trailer shop in Minnesota and I saw there were uh, 12 super singles mounted on aluminum rims. They're all retreads. They're good. Some of them were brand new retreads. The rims are nice. And I said, what's going on with those super singles? And the guy said, well, we're waiting for the tire man to come and pick them up. I said, yeah, how much? And he told me, I think it was fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars, and I just about shit my pants. That's, <laughs> you mean I can run? Uh, I didn't even. I didn't. It didn't take me long. I didn't have to burn off many brain cells to figure that one out. So, uh, I I knew the the shop. In fact, I had an account there. And he's, I said, well, I'll take him. He said, well, you got to pay me cash because it's a it's a side deal. You can't use your account. So I gave him the cash, and bang, just like that. I had enough tires and rims to uh, do both my trailers and my truck. Fifteen hundred bucks. So now I'll tell you, the last time I bought a set of Michelin Duels, the X, the X tires, I was sixty-five hundred dollars out the door for eight tires. That's pretty steep. So to come along and be able to do my truck and four trailers for $1,500, for two trailers, but four wheels in each trailer, for $1,500, that was that was pretty incredible. I, I was all over that. So I went home and got my little trailer, and I came down, and I loaded it up and took it back to my shop and uh, put them on the truck first. Now, these are retreads. And uh, I, I, I had to go to the tire shop because I can't get my trailer in the shop. And my shop is too small. So I took the trailer and uh, to the tire shop, got the super singles put on. And I've still got, you know, two and a half years later, I've still got four of those uh, original retread tires. And they're still, you know, you can. You, there's got to be some wear on them, but you can't really tell by looking at them. But the ones I put on the truck, the drive tires, after about a month, one of the uh, one of the sidewalls on the inside had ruptured, and it looked like a, a basketball was mounted. Like it just, it didn't blow, but it just, it just like you're blowing bubble gum and. Uh, this big basketball size bubble was coming out of it. So I pulled that off. And when I did, I decided to buy it because I was out of love. So I bought a new Michelin. And then when I went home, I, uh, at my tire guy, I bought three more. So I put all new drive Michelin drive tires on within the first month. And I, Two and a half years later, over 300,000 miles, I'm still running two of those tires. It's got about an eighth of an inch of tread left on it, and now I'm in the, you know, I'm, I'm going to pull them off, I think, this week maybe. But because I've got other tires I bought in uh, Chicago that have like 70%, 75% rubber. And again, I, it's the same deal. The, the guy just wanted to get rid of them. Yeah, take them. 
So for two thousand dollars, I got four new Michelins or four. Uh, he said they're eight months old, and four more rims. Now, funny, my tire guy in the winter time when things slow down, he's got this big polishing machine out back. So I take all these rims over and get them polished, and they look better than new. It's incredible. So I got some. I got really shiny wheels on my truck and trailers. So I don't. I can't say enough good things about the super singles. The fuel economy. They lighten up your truck and your trailer. I believe that they are one tough tire. Now I have had a couple of issues. The one where the side wall went out, I've had that happen to another tire, another one of those retreads. No, actually one of my drives did that. One of the new drives, it's about two months ago. And I was down in Florida and I noticed a big crack in the sidewall. So I would, I didn't waste any time getting it off. Went to a Love's and bought a new tire. And brought it home and set up my shop and put one of my old tires back on. So I've got a, I've got some new tires in my shop too. But the, uh, you know, when you're fueling up with super singles, you don't, you don't go around and kick your tires anymore. You don't have to. You can tell by looking at them. But one of the problems that I had was uh, I ran over a nail in Chicago. <clears throat> and it slow leaked. By the time I get up to uh, La Crosse and hit the bridge coming into Minnesota, as soon as I hit the bridge, the tire went down. And it went down on the rim. So I got pulled into that rest area and I'm looking at it and uh, what had happened, you run over a nail and the tire slowly loses air over four or five hours. And you can't tell these tires float. You can't tell that the air has gone down. The, the first indication that you have of a flat tire is when that rim hits the pavement. So the tire is disintegrated by that time and it all happens in a second. But luckily, I had uh, a spare. The trailer, the trailer I had had a uh, super single tire rack and a spare super single on it. So all I had to do was call a tire guy, and he came and changed it, and it was like forty dollars. So that worked out okay, but it ruined the tire, a, a eleven hundred dollar tire, and it ruined the rim. So the solution that I found is to, for $600, I went online, eBay or Amazon, and I bought a, a tire pressure monitoring system. And it's a little Bluetooth gizmo that goes over the valve stem. And it sends a signal up to the, uh, the LED monitor that I have mounted in my truck. And it just constantly goes from one sensor to the next, just in a rotation, 24 hours a day, just one after the other. And it tells me the air pressure of the tire and the temperature of the air pressure, of the air. And since I bought that system, well, I haven't really had any problems, but if there is a, a if I do have a, a nail <clears throat> puncture that, loses air, this system will send me an alert. And when that happens, when I get an alert, at least I have time to get over to the shoulder and, and save the tire and the rim. Again, I have, a, I have a spare on both my trailers now. For a while, I only had a spare on one, so it's just... Uh, just something I didn't get around to doing. That's a lot. <laughs> I won't go into that. But anyway, the uh, with that with that monitoring system, I've kind of eliminated the the weeks the weak spot in the super singles. 
So I think they're a good investment. And I think a lot of other people would invest in them too if they thought they could gain a mile per gallon, you know, reduce their tire bill, eliminate a lot of the tire problems that you have with the duels on trailers and blah, blah, blah. But you just have to know how to get them. And you need a little bit of cash. So that's how I did it. And if you look around, I like the uh, Facebook marketplace. So I roll into Chicago and if I'm looking for a part or something that I need or something that I want, Chicago is a huge area. And a lot of people put up their the, the stuff that they don't want. They put it on, on uh, Facebook marketplace. And super singles are no exception. Last fall, I wanted to uh, get a few extra rims. So I did a rim search, super singles. And there was a trucking company in uh, just south of Chicago that had just pulled, I don't know how many, they had like 20 rims. They pulled them out. They had a tanker operation. Then the super singles weren't working for them. So anyway, I uh, I called this guy and I bought 10 of them. And they were cheap. They were like $100, $125. And they were two or three years old. Alcoa's. Nice condition. The holes weren't uh, elongated or anything. It was They were just nice rims and cheap. So I bought those. And then, uh, you know, when these tires, my, my tandem started getting down a little bit, I started looking around for replacements. I didn't want to pay $1,200 a tire. So four of these Michelin tires, these grip tires, you know, out the door, you're looking at uh, $4,800, which is still $1,500 cheaper than uh, eight drives. But I didn't want to pay $4,800. So I went on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, and there was a guy that had uh, four. He said there were 75% rubber, eight months old, Blah, blah, blah. So I gave him a call. My son, who's down in Lyle, Illinois, uh, at, at college, he came and uh, I parked the truck and we took the pickup over and looked at these tires. And, uh, yeah, I bought them right on the spot. Get four, four $1,200 tires and four Alcoa rims for eighteen or 1900 you, you can't beat that. And if I'm getting 300,000 miles out of the tires, man, I, you know, it's just a good plan. And if you can, if you can, I know a lot of, a lot of the people that don't like the super singles have drivers on them. And the boss gets a call when the, when the rim hits the ground and it's a $2,000 cleanup. That's if he didn't take out the airbag and, you know, brake chambers or anything like that for quarter fenders. So a lot of, a lot of uh, companies don't like them. They try them and then they say, no, not for me. And then when they, when they uh, go back to the dualies, all of a sudden all these super singles are half price <laughs> or better. <clears throat> and then a guy like me and the guy that uh, the next guy like me will come along and uh, you get a deal. So I wanted to share that story, how you get super singles. You might have your own story. Or hopefully you'll, uh, anybody that listens to this, mom, <laughs> anybody that listens to this video, uh, will just start watching for uh, super singles and realize the value in them. Anyway, uh, what else can we talk about? Let's see. Oh, we've been talking 45 minutes. You know what? I better call it quits. Anyway, this is Steve. Handy Freight. The original Gypsy. Over and out.